Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and today we are going to discuss with you the very interesting topic Why do you fear to fly? But maybe you feel yourself absolutely comfortable in the skies as I do But according to official statistics, we have 75% of all gear passengers who feel their self worry or feel some kind of level of anxiety traveling by planes. So if you are okay with flying, maybe your parents, relatives and friends are not. As we know, my friends, the aviation transport is the most reliable and safe of all transportation. If you compare it to the cars, trains, ships, etc. But still we have 75% of people feeling themselves uncomfortable flying airplanes. So my friends, in this video I'll tell you why does it happen like this and what do you need to do to fight with your fears. Alright guys, I'm not good at drawing pictures, but anyway, it's our human brain. As you can see, it consists of several parts. The major part is brain stem, then limbic brain and neocortex. As you know, human species have the most developed brain of all the creatures on our planet Earth. Thousands and thousands of years of evolution developed our brain and made it so unique, but it's unique only in one part of it, the neocortex, and it's huge in our brain. It's responsible for your logic thinking, for your intellect, etc. And it really makes you a human. The other creatures and animals do not have such developed and huge area of neocortex in their brains, which helps us to dominate in animal world. With the help of our unique brain, we can analyze the situation, we can predict, we can calculate, we can design, we can create, we are human beings. I'm telling you that, guys, because in this area, you understand that the aviation transport is the most safe transport in the world. So in this area you receive this information and you understand it. This area, the central area in our brain is called limbic brain and it's responsible for emotions. This area is developed in most of the mammals on our planet. So this brain, if we take like this, it's also the product of evolution, but it takes the evolutionary less time for us, it took more time to develop the neocortex, alright? I hope you understand. And if we go down to Jurassic period, the reptiles, they had brain stem, just a brain stem, like this. Guys, I'm telling you all of this because you need to understand. Your fear is here, down in Jurassic Park. So to fight your fears, you need to connect your human intellect, your human mind thinking with your ancestor brain, with your old brain, old reptile brain. This is responsible for instincts, okay? And this is for human thinking. So you need to understand your instincts and to fight them. The fear is the very strong instinct. It doesn't mean that instincts like fear or instincts to breed or to dominate are bad. It means that as human being, you need to control them. The instincts, even though it's a very small part of our brain, it's a brain stem, the instincts themselves are very strong. And the nature did like this for purpose. Because instincts are the best tools for live and die. If you are a cliffhanger, in cliffhanger situation, your brain would be concentrated on your instincts and you will do your best to get out from the situation. And that is why if you fear to fly, then you're inside the airplane, you put yourself, you put yourself on your own in such emergency situation and your brain will go like, like this. So the fear will dominate your brain. The first engine powered airplane flight was in 19, yeah, you know, yeah, thank you, 1903, a little bit more than a century ago. But me and you, as human beings, we passed thousands of years of evolution, 
and it's just unnatural for us to fly the airplanes. It is very normal for us to afraid of height. It is very normal for us to afraid of unfamiliar and uncomfortable environment. Because flying the airplane, you put yourself in uncomfortable environment, of course. Because, of course, it's less comfortable if you compare it to your armchair in your office where you usually used to work. But for me as a pilot, it is comfortable. The, my seat in the cockpit is comfortable, I got used to it, and I feel myself exactly as you do in your office. And of course, if you work on the ground in some kind of office and you spend your most of your life on the ground, for you every flight it would be something really special. And of course, I know many cases then the airplane encounters turbulence area and it's going to be the bumpy ride. All the passengers start to pray, start to feel unwell, they are taking pills, etc, etc, etc. Do I afraid of turbulence? No, I know that the airplanes were designed to withstand even severe turbulence. So believe me guys, flying in turbulence conditions, of course it's not very comfortable, but you need to fasten your seatbelts for your personal security, for your personal safety, because you can just jump and hit the ceiling with your head, so it's better to buckle up, of course, and nothing special would happen to airplane itself in a turbulence conditions. Now guys, let's speak about phobias themselves. There is a term like aerophobia, uh, however, I don't believe in that. It's my personal opinion. I think people fear of different things like anthropophobia, claustrophobia, agoraphobia and nosophobia. I'll explain them to you. But first I would like to say that fear of flying is not the same with fear of height because in airplane you're like in a room so you're like in a, some kind of object like in a train or in a ship and there is no any glass floor beneath and you cannot identify uh, the objects because airplane flies very high sometimes there are some clouds but you cannot feel the same fear then you will stay in a roof edge and you just look downstairs Believe me, you'll fear. Everyone would fear. It's human instinct. In airplane, it's totally different. So you may be afraid of height, of course, then you're on the roof or the, at the cliff edge, but you may feel yourself absolutely comfortable inside the airplane. Now, guys, let's start with this first phobia that you can encounter flying the airplane. It's anthropophobia. Anthro means human. So you're afraid of people. Too many people in the same place. I personally know a lot of people who complain about being in one place with so many people. Places like airports and airplanes, because in airplane we have a limited space and you sometimes have to be seated with some kind of other man that you don't really know and there are too many people in one place and yeah, I understand it could be quite uncomfortable. But if you ask me, I would feel myself less comfortable flying alone in an airplane. Uh, I would prefer that the airplane would be fully loaded and I would feel myself quite well. The next one, claustrophobia, and we know about it a lot. People just afraid to be in some restricted and small place. The airplane is not the small place itself, but it's quite restrictive. The third one is agoraphobia, and I think it's most strong phobias that you can experience in an airplane, because it means that you are in some kind of unfamiliar place and you cannot apply your control on the situation. Is it more safe to drive a car several kilometers to your destination than buying a ticket to some kind of airline? The answer is no. But then you drive your car, you have a feeling that all the situation is under control because you're just controlling the car. But it's not true. You just cannot control all the environment around you. You just cannot control reckless drivers and drunk drivers. And believe me, it's not safe compared to air transport. So my friends, the main reason is why do people fear to fly? It's my own opinion is because they need to trust their lives to me. Because I'm the guy who takes them from their origin to their destination in the most safe manner, 
but they are not controlling the situation at all. Passengers on board of commercial aircraft trust their lives uh, to pilots, trust their lives to aircraft, so the aircraft manufacturer itself, and they trust their lives to airline. That is why airline reputation, the aircraft manufacturer reputation, and the pilot reputation and pilot training is very important. And that is why we have so many regulations, local regulations, international aviation regulations, to make air transportation as safe as possible. But still, this type of phobia is very strong. Type of unknown places and unable to control the situation. It's a steering wheel. Uh, so you are out of control of the situation then you fly on the airplane and of course I can understand that guys and it's absolutely normal phobia but I'm in aviation for many years and I have never experienced that type of phobic because I just trust my colleagues and the last one here is nosophobia it's very popular nowadays due to this coronavirus at some time and it's quite connected with uh, anthropophobia uh, it's fear to get some kind of disease. So again, flying inside the airplane in a limited space with a lot of people, passengers just afraid to get some kind of disease. But it's unlikely to happen because actually the air inside the airplanes is quite fresh and it recycles, I think, for Boeing 737 every three minutes. We have uh, fresh air inside the cabin compartment. So it's even fresher, comparable to your office or even to your house sometimes. And now guys, let's talk about what actions and precautions you need to do to avoid a uh, feel of anxiety while flying the airplane. I'm not a doctor, so it's just my personal opinion after some of research I've done in the internet. And of course, it's based on my personal experience. Well, first, Imagine, imagine the situation in front. Try to understand what you actually fear when you fly. Remember about those phobias that I just told you a minute ago. So try to understand whether you're afraid of people, whether you're afraid of limited space, whether you're afraid of being not controlling the situation happening. And that will help you to identify your fear more precisely and then your enemies identify you can fight it. So my first advice, imagine yourself in this kind of stressful situation, but don't panic, uh, understand what is your fear. My second advice is to upgrade your aviation knowledge because as a passenger, you may not know all the things happening uh, in the air with the air transport in this industry itself. As I said before with the turbulence example, remember that many people just afraid that the turbulent air can just rip the airplane apart and kill everyone on board. Believe me, that won't happen. So you need to upgrade your aviation knowledge. If you're afraid of flying, go to the simulator, visit uh, the cockpit. I personally know two people who were afraid of flying and after they went to the simulator, they really liked the airplanes and they became pilots but on general aviation not in commercial aviation so my friend the more you know the less fear you will have flying inside the airplane for me it's routine like for you going to the office of course i love my job because it gives me some kind of unique experience that i cannot have been on the ground but it's very routine guys and it's very rare and it's stressful my next advice is to communicate well if you travel alone and you feel yourself a little bit anxious about your flight try to communicate with the people just beside you with other passenger maybe you'll have a good friendship after all and believe me it will be less stressful for you both and if you have opportunity and resources to have your partner with you go and fly with your friend or wife etc or your kids it doesn't matter you'll feel yourself more comfortable believe me next goes to drink don't drink don't drink alcohol but drink a lot of water because the air inside the airplane is so dry that you need to compensate uh, by drinking water or juices why the water is so important because i draw to you remember our brain let's say it's 
brain it's one brain and has the reptile brain mammal brain and human brain with the lack of water this area shrinks it goes like this and you'll have just this reptile brain working which gives you fear so you need to drink a lot of water uh, because your brain uh, consists of water uh, I think for 80% or something 80 or 90 so it really needs your the water next don't eat a lot of sugar don't drink a lot of coffee these things would increase the nervous sensitivity uh, and that will make you more fuzziness that can increase your anxiety and that can lead to your panic attack here we go with breeze do breeze exercises if you know what meditation is you get my point if you don't well i'll explain you in meditation you just concentrate all the ear goes into the, your nose uh, through your throat to your lungs and you just completely think about this ear going down and coming out from your nose and by this you can concentrate on this ear circulation and you don't think about the other things really and um, well that takes time but it's good practice guys i think my best advice is to fly more the more you fly the more you understand and it's completely safe to fly inside the airplane if you have the opportunity to fly the airplane to reach your destination go and fly it don't hide your fears face them inside the airplane i trust in you my friend believe me you can do it look at me i fly more than 100 flights for one year and i'm still happy and healthy well my friend if you don't believe me believe in reality because if you open flight reddit 24 website you'll see all the airplanes online flying just on air taking the passengers from their origins to destinations carrying millions of people per day they are taking their customers using the most sophisticated transport and the most safe transport ever made the air transport Thank you very much for watching this video, my friends. English is not my native language, so of course there were some of mistakes, but don't pay attention to that. Just take the topic of the whole. And put the like if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and hope you have a great time.